Last week on Wolf Den Live, we talked about the upcoming Inhumans TV show, and its pretty strange journey from originally being part of Marvel's third phase of movies to now finding a home on ABC. I started to talk about why I think Inhumans is now a TV show and how it might be part of a greater behind the scenes battle within Marvel, but I don't think I did a very good job explaining it. It's actually a really long story that stretches all the way back to the mid 90s and takes a lot of weird twists and turns. So what I'm going to do today is to try to explain exactly what I think is going on behind the scenes at Marvel that led to Inhumans going to the small screen rather than the big screen. Now before we move on, let me just stress that I am not a historian. This isn't supposed to be some historical record. While I'm doing my best to untangle this web, there will be some opinion and theory mixed in with the facts. Regardless, I do believe that this is the best explanation for not only why Inhumans is now a TV show, but also for some of the other decisions the company has made within the last few years. So. Back in the mid-90s, Marvel was going through a lot of financial problems and ultimately filed for bankruptcy. To alleviate some of their debt, they sold off the movie rights for some of their characters to various studios. For the purposes of this video, all you really need to know is that Sony got Spider-Man and Fox got X-Men and the Fantastic Four. Now for the most part, everything was running smoothly. Fox and Sony were making a lot of money off of these movies and it did help Marvel get out of bankruptcy. Now around the mid to late 2000s, Marvel decided to form their own movie studio and make films based on the characters they own complete movie rights to. This would become Marvel Studios as we know it today, led by Kevin Feige. In 2009, a year after Marvel's first two movies came out, the Walt Disney Company bought Marvel Entertainment and everything that went with it. That includes the comics, the characters, and specifically, the movie studio. In 2010, they formed Marvel Television, which is run by Jeff Loeb. Now, despite Marvel now being owned by Disney, for the most part, this really didn't affect the movies being put out by Fox or Sony. They were still allowed to do whatever they wanted with the characters they owned, while Disney focused on the Marvel Cinematic Universe. In 2013, Marvel TV finally released their first live action series, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and this was a big deal because this was going to be set in the same continuity as their movies. Characters and story elements from the movies can and did show up in the series. Hell, Samuel L. Jackson even showed up on two episodes as Nick Fury. However, in 2014, after years of relative peace and calm waters, things started to get a little hostile. Marvel announced that they were canceling the ongoing Fantastic Four comic, and various writers and artists were saying that Marvel was not allowing them to put the Fantastic Four or its characters in other books or in promotional material. Licensees were not allowed to make any merchandise based off the Fantastic Four. At around the same time, longtime X-Men scribe Chris Claremont announced that he was not allowed to create any new characters who could be considered mutants, and it was also discovered that licensees weren't allowed to make X-Men merchandise either. Now, this decree is said to have come down from Marvel CEO and everybody's favorite real-life supervillain, Ike Perlmutter. It's rumored that he was mad that Fox was using the character of Quicksilver in X-Men Days of Future Past, because Quicksilver was also scheduled to be in Avengers Age of Ultron. Both films had entered production at around the same time, and Days of Future Past wound up coming out a year before Age of Ultron. This led to two movies in two completely different universes having two completely different Quicksilvers. It's said that Perlmutter didn't like that, and that he also didn't like how the Fantastic Four movie that Fox had greenlit was pretty much nothing like the Fantastic Four of the Marvel comics. All of this combined with the current deal Marvel has with Fox, which isn't as collaborative or as favorable to them as their deal with Sony is, caused Perlmutter to force the downplay of the Fantastic Four and the X-Men in Marvel Comics, and lead to the rise of the Inhumans. The Inhumans are a group of characters very similar to the X-Men. They're a group of strange individuals with unique powers who are sort of looked down upon by society. And in 2014, they got a brand new comic book series, they became a major part in season two of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and it was announced they were getting their own movie in the third phase of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But while Marvel Television and Marvel Comics were playing along, Marvel Studios, remember the movie guys? They weren't happy. See, this wasn't the only time Perlmutter stuck his nose in Kevin Feige's 
business. His notorious penny-pinching ways caused a lot of budgetary problems throughout the many Marvel movies, including shortchanging actors. Also, it's believed that the reason why we haven't seen a Black Panther movie or a Carol Danvers Captain Marvel movie or even a Black Widow movie is because Perlmutter doesn't believe that movies with non-white male leads can make money. Finally, in 2015, after what's believed to have been a really bad budgetary battle over Captain America's Civil War, Kevin Feige successfully lobbied for Marvel Studios to become separate from Marvel Entertainment. Kevin Feige and Marvel Studios now report directly to Alan Horn and the Greater Walt Disney Company. They no longer report to Ike Perlmutter and Marvel Entertainment. But Marvel Television, Jeff Loeb's group, still reports to Marvel Entertainment. This rift pretty much caused Marvel Television and Marvel Studios to become two completely separate companies, despite the fact that they both have Marvel in the name and they're both owned by Mickey Mouse. And this has led to a lot of disconnect between film and television. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. suddenly had less and less to do with the main Marvel Cinematic Universe, the Netflix shows pretty much only referenced the first Avengers movie, and the movies themselves, for the most part, ignore everything that's going on on TV. Now, they'll come out and say that it's scheduling conflicts and that film and television work on two different timetables, but there was definitely a sense in the air that the two were trying to distance themselves from each other. Which brings us back to The Inhumans. Now, The Inhumans movie was originally supposed to come out in 2019, but it was ultimately canceled. Now, at the time, it was said that Inhumans was canceled because it wound up being in competition with the fifth Indiana Jones movie that Disney was also going to put out. But the rumor going around the internet was that it was ultimately canceled because Kevin Feige, like the rest of us, doesn't care about the Inhumans. And the Inhumans was Ike Perlmutter's pet project, not Feige's. And because Perlmutter still has control over Marvel Television, the Inhumans have pretty much been at home on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. That is until last week and when it was announced they were getting their own series. Now the pilot episode of the Inhumans is going to debut in IMAX theaters across the country, so in the end, guess it's going to be on the big screen, but ultimately, it's not a part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, it's part of the Marvel TV Universe, and that's a really small potato compared to the big guy in the movies. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is pretty much the story of the Inhumans TV show. What started as one man's journey to try and screw over Fox wound up being a bigger deal than that and led to some insurrection in his own ranks. It's pretty crazy to think that this could happen and it makes you wonder what the future holds for Marvel, not just Marvel Studios and Marvel Entertainment, but Marvel as a whole. Will we see a unified Marvel again and have the movie studio and TV studios be in better sync with each other? I'd like to think so, but I think in order for that to happen, Disney's got to get rid of somebody at the top of Marvel Entertainment. What do you guys think of the Inhumans television show and this whole crazy backstory that comes along with it? Do you think it's all true? Do you think I'm a crazy tinfoil hat conspiracy theorist? Are you excited for the Inhumans television show? Let me know down below or anywhere on the internet. I genuinely don't know anybody who is excited for anything in humans. If you are, Please tell me why. I need to know. It just it fascinates me. Of course, new videos every Tuesday and Wednesday. And don't forget Wednesday night, as always, Wolf Den Live, our live YouTube show right here, 7 o'clock Eastern, whatever that is specific. I didn't look it up. You can Google it. You're smart. Don't forget our current t-shirt promotion over at our Public store. Link in the description below. Go out and get yourself a nice little video gamey referencing shirt with our name on it. And as always, like if you like, subscribe if you really like, share this video with a friend. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.